Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to that famous asteroid, or technically famous meteor, that hit our planet back in 2013. The meteor that was recorded by various dash cams across Chulabinsk in Russia, and that today is referred to as the Chulabinsk meteor. And this is one of the most fascinating such events in recent history for one simple reason. This was a relatively large piece of rock that was well documented by a lot of different eyewitnesses, including a lot of different CCTVs, and it also produced a lot of different pieces that were retrieved and collected by various scientists, and even include one of the largest pieces of rock ever recovered from such an event. And in the last few years, the scientists were basically focusing on, first of all, the origin of this particular asteroid or this meteorite, and second of all, wanting to understand how frequent such events might occur on our planet and how likely we are to see one in the next few decades, mostly because this was a pretty destructive event. Even though the original meteoroid was only about 17 to 20 meters across, slightly larger in size than a typical bus, once it hit the upper atmosphere, the resulting blast was really powerful, approximately 30 times the Hiroshima bomb, equivalent to about 500 tons of TNT. And this blast resulted in quite a lot of damage across Chelyabinsk, including 1500 cases of minor injuries, including cases of sunburn or damage to the eyes. Which of course suggests that studying these particular events, trying to understand how frequent they are, and more importantly, trying to find a way to prevent them happening in the future, has since become sort of a priority for a lot of different asteroid studies. Even though today the statistical analysis suggests that such an event might only happen once every 100 years. But we actually might be somewhat wrong about these assumptions, which is why it's important to understand these events in more detail. But what do we know about this particular asteroid, and where do we think it possibly came from? Well, its origins seem to be really exciting. Some of the initial investigations and analysis of the rocks establish that this is a highly shocked meteorite, meaning that it experienced quite a lot of collisions in its lifetime. But in this case, the minerals present inside the rock were suggestive of at least two major collisions that allowed the scientists to establish a timeline of its creation. First of all, this is what's known as a stony meteorite, usually a type of a meteorite that's highly shattered and possesses a lot of remelted material that most likely happened because of some kind of a really powerful impact. On top of this, its initial speed suggested that it most likely came from the region of the asteroid belt that's located between Mars and Jupiter. Furthermore, by looking at multiple lines of evidence present inside the asteroid, the scientists were able to use some of the minerals present in the asteroid to establish a timeline of two major collisions that very likely explain everything about its origin and explain why all of this occurred and why this asteroid eventually made its way to planet Earth. With most of this being done using two very well-known methods, one using zircon crystals, which often contain uranium that eventually turns into lead, and so by comparing the ratio of uranium and lead, it becomes possible to find out when these crystals were formed. With the crystals themselves usually only produced during extremely powerful and very shocking events, such as during an extremely massive collision. So for example here on planet Earth, a massive enough collision can often reset these zircon crystals, allowing them to recapture some of the uranium and resetting the age of the crystals, which then usually suggests there was some sort of a major impact event with a rock powerful and massive enough to produce an explosion equivalent to a, an atomic bomb that's millions of times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. And so by studying zircon crystals in the Chelyabinsk meteorite, the scientists found out that there was definitely a very major event that most likely created the original rock approximately 4.47 billion years ago with these major signs of impact visible in the entire meteorite and a lot of different samples investigated. But all of this most likely happened early on in the solar system, but after the creation of the planets. In other words, it's believed that early Earth and potentially a lot of other planets already existed in the system, and so this most likely corresponds to a lot of high energy impacts that happened between 4.48 and 4.44 billion years ago. And we're talking about very powerful impacts, possibly with rocks of hundreds and hundreds of kilometers across. Something we believe might have happened around the solar system because of two possible events. Either because all of these asteroids got dislodged when all of the planets were moving around the solar system and switching places, 
The period we refer to as planetary migration or giant planet migration, which in theory could have been caused by the motion of Jupiter and Saturn across the solar system, which then dislodged all of these asteroids and made them collide with various planets, or possibly the event that ended up creating our moon, the so-called giant impact hypothesis. This event was so powerful and created so much debris that there is actually a very high chance that some of this debris then made it to the asteroid belt and started to collide with more rocks producing more debris and sort of causing a chain reaction. And some of these impacts were powerful enough to then completely remount the asteroids that were already present in the region. But the true origin of these powerful events is still not truly understood and all of this is still just a hypothesis. Either way though, it's quite clear that these powerful asteroid events were very likely responsible for completely resetting a lot of the asteroids located in the asteroid belt as well. With one of them, currently an unknown asteroid, being the original parent of the Chilabinsk meteor. As you can see from this image right here, it was probably really really large, at least several hundred kilometers across. But by studying this asteroid again in the recent study, and by using another method, in this case using phosphates and comparing the phosphate uh, ratio in the minerals, the scientists were able to confirm that there was a second event that most likely resulted in the production of the meteor itself, the event that very likely happened approximately 50 million years ago. In this case, referred to as the late fragmentation event, that essentially released some of these rocks that were probably inside the larger asteroid, but when something hit this asteroid about 50 million years ago, it then suddenly broke it apart, releasing all of these asteroids that started to fly around with potentially somewhat eccentric orbits. In other words, the pieces that then hit planet Earth in 2013 were actually created approximately 50 million years ago, with the larger asteroid existing somewhere in the asteroid belt for nearly 4.4 billion years. But that second impact was a lot less powerful, and it's quite clear because it didn't really reset these zircon crystals. But it did affect the phosphate minerals, which were most likely changed by the high temperatures from this particular event as well. Although it's not really clear exactly when this event happened, it's just clear that it was most likely within the last 50 million years. But in this case, this particular discovery is kind of important. It means that, well, because of this impact in the last few millions of years, a lot more pieces are probably somewhere out there with potentially somewhat similar orbits and potentially have a reason to also collide with our planet. Or maybe they already have in the past, we just don't really know if a lot of these rocks are connected. In other words, that original event that broke apart this particular parent asteroid very likely created quite a lot of different fragments. And many of these fragments do have a chance to also hit planet Earth sometime in the future. Something that we're obviously trying to prevent and something that we're trying to learn more about by assessing the risks pretty much on a daily basis. There are quite a lot of automated systems we've discussed in the past. And on top of this, by trying to find a way to maybe redirect these rocks once we discover that one of them does collide with our planet. We're going to be talking more about this so-called dark mission in one of the future videos, but you might also want to check out the previous video about the most dangerous asteroid in the last few years that only was dangerous for about a week. Find out more about this in one of the videos somewhere right there or in the description below. But obviously there are other reasons to study this asteroid and similar asteroids for more of a scientific curiosity reasons. For example, if indeed these asteroids were actually created as a result of the fragments coming from the Earth-Thea collision that then produced the moon, this is actually really important in order for us to understand how the moon was created, how our planet was created, and how all of these fragments then influence the rest of the solar system. And so studying all of this and trying to understand the origins of these events might actually help us make a connection and figure out how all of this then influenced the evolution of the solar system and the terrestrial planets. So in a sense, the 2013 event was actually super important for a lot of different reasons, including of course being a general wake-up call, a reminder that these events do happen and are potentially very dangerous something we'll be talking more about in some of the future videos. But I guess until then, check out all of the relevant links about the study and some of the other links in regards to the meteor in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.